Welcome to Retro Crisis, and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can play Sony PlayStation Vita games on your computer. So firstly we will go to vita3k.org and the emulator we'll be using to play PlayStation Vita games is obviously called Vita3k. So once you're on the homepage, go up here to the download button and then pick the operating system version of your choice. As I'm using Windows, I'll be going to Windows Nightlies and go to Grab from GitHub. And then once you've done that, the download should begin. And then once the download is finished, you should have a zip file called windows-latest.zip. What you need to do next is extract the zip file into its own folder. So I'm just going to extract it here and great. Then we've got the windows-latest folder and open it and then double click this file here which is vita3k.exe and then two windows should open up you'll have one window that looks like it's running some kind of log and you'll have the primary vita3k window so firstly select your language I'm going to choose English United Kingdom because that's where I'm from then go to next and then next you need to define your pref path so I'm just going to leave this as the default path but if you want to change it just click on change emulator path then go next. And now we need to install two bits of firmware. And both of these can be downloaded from the official PlayStation website. So firstly, click on download firmware, and then it should open a new window. And then click on this blue download update button. And then next go to download font package. And this should automatically initiate a download. And now you'll notice next to download firmware and download font package, you'll see installed X installed X. We're going to now change these X's into V's. So what you need to do is click on install firmware and then you need to navigate to the first file that you downloaded. So I'll choose psvupdate.pup and then go to open. And this should begin the installation process for the first bit of firmware. And then you'll see firmware successfully installed and then press OK and then you'll notice installed X becomes installed V. And now we want to repeat the process for the second file that we downloaded. So go back to install firmware file and then click on psp 2 updatepup and go to open. And then OK. And that's it, that's both bits of firmware installed. And then go to next. And here you can select interface settings. You can choose whether you want the info bar visible or not. You can activate or deactivate the live area app screen and you can enable and disable grid mode. I generally just leave these as the default settings, but feel free to go nuts. And then when you're done, go next. And there we go, we've completed the initial setup. And now go to okay. And then you'll see this welcome screen and I'm just going to untick show next time. So this welcome screen message won't pop up each time you uh, load up Vita3k. Press close. And now you'll see the select user screen. But as this is the first time we're logging into Vita3k, we don't have a user account. So go to create user and then type in a name. And if you're feeling extra spicy, just click on choose avatar and then you can change this picture here. But I'm just going to leave it as the default logo. Go to confirm and then OK. And that's it, you've created your user. And if you tick this automatic user login button, basically every time you load up Vita3k, it will automatically log into your user account. But if you have multiple user accounts here, it's probably best to leave this unticked. But I'll just go to automatic user login just for simplicity's sake. Go to your user account and there we go. You'll see this very familiar screen. If you actually own a PS Vita like I do, now all you need to do is click anywhere on this screen because that will work as a touch screen. And so here are some apps you can have a little mess around with. Feel free to do that at your own pace. Now I'm going to show you how to install a game. So I'm not going to tell you where to find your PlayStation Vita games from, but there are a few methods of getting games onto this. So you can go to file and you can go to install.pkg or install zip or install VPK. And then that way you can install whichever PSP game you have. Alternatively, what you can do is if you've ripped a game yourself, you can go to open pref path and go to the folder that is called UX0 and go to app. And then you can copy and paste your game here. And you should see folders that are named something similar to this. And when you go within a folder, you'll see this kind of folder structure here. Once you've done that, go back to Vita3k. And now what you need to do is click on the refresh button. You can now see those three games that I'd copied have now begun to appear. Now, before we fire the game up, there are a few things I want to show you. So if you go to configuration and settings, 
and I'm just going to maximize this window so you can see it a bit clearer. Now I must admit, I really don't mess around with these settings too much, but here are a few things that you might find useful. So firstly, go to GPU, and where it says backend renderer, it's currently set to OpenGL. For me personally, I prefer to use Vulkan. And then here are a few kind of screen filter settings you can mess around with. I just leave that as default. And currently internal resolution upscaling is set to 1x, which is the Vita's native resolution of 960 by 544 pixels. If you want, you can just toggle this slider here to increase and decrease the resolution scaling. So I'm just going to leave that at 1x for the moment. And down here, you can slide the uh, anisotropic filtering too. I'm just going to leave it at 1x for the moment. And that's currently the, uh, the settings I generally leave it on at. And for now, let's just uh, click on save and then close. Next, go to controls and controllers. And then if you have a control pad connected, it will show up here to confirm. And then go to controls and keyboard controls. And if you want to change the mapping of any of these buttons, simply click on it and then choose whatever you want to change it to. Some buttons I recommend that you kind of just commit to memory are the PS button, which is the P key, and full screen, which is F11, toggle touch, which is T, and toggle GUI visibility to G. Uh, G being enabling and disabling the, um, the toolbar at the top of the screen while you're in game. And that's pretty much all you need for now. So let's just close this and now let's launch a game. So I'm just going to go to P4G here and click it. And then here using my mouse, I'll just click on the start button and bang, the game has loaded. And now we're in the game, you can see it in action. Now, one thing I do wanna try before we leave is I wanna see if we can upgrade the graphics. So we want to enable the menu bar by pressing G on your keyboard. And then with your mouse, go to configuration and settings. Go to GPU, go to internal resolution upscaling, and then bump this up to whatever you want. So I'm going to chance it and try 4X and then you need to go to save and reboot for the changes to take effect. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the native PS Vita resolution versus approximately 4K. And just remember, if you wanna to go to the menu bar, press G, and if you want to exit full screen, press F11 on your keyboard. Anyway, I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching, and this has been Retro Crisis.